greetings and welcome to Totality Town. In this video, we're going to do a preview for the upcoming annular solar eclipse, which will take place on October 14th, 2023. If you've watched the video on the different types of solar eclipses, then you already know that an annular solar eclipse happens when the moon is a little bit further away from us in its orbit. Because it's further away, it appears smaller and the moon does not block the entire disk of the sun. Instead, what you get looks like a ring of fire. Makes sense. The word annular comes from the word annulus, which means ring. We in the Western Hemisphere are going to get to experience a spectacular annular solar eclipse on October 14, 2023. Now, there's a lot that we need to talk about on this particular eclipse, so I'm going to try and move fast. We're going to begin by looking at how the maps showing the paths of eclipses are different for annular solar eclipses compared to total solar eclipses. Let's start by taking a look at the map for the total solar eclipse on April 8th, 2024. So on the map, notice that you have all of the different lines here showing the region that will get the partial eclipse. And on the side of this particular poster, you see the numbers going up. And the numbers represent that everywhere along this line, we'll get to see 90% of the sun covered by the moon. Numbers go all the way up to 100% is within this shaded path. And that's where the moon completely covers the moon's disk and you get a total solar eclipse. Okay, maps for annular eclipses aren't like that. They have similar lines for the regions that are only going to experience a partial solar eclipse. But notice that this map never even hits 90% as you follow these numbers along the edge. Gets up to 85 and then we're into the path of annularity. Why is that? In annular eclipses, the sun is never 100% covered or obscured. During the October 14th annular solar eclipse, the most anyone will get to see the sun covered is about 89.5%. And that's why you don't see any lines for 90%. So why bother being on that central path for annularity? Aren't you just seeing a partial solar eclipse no matter where you are? If you're on the center line for an annular eclipse, then at the height of the event, you're going to see the moon perfectly silhouetted against the sun. The center line is also, by the way, when annularity will last the longest, just under 4 minutes and 50 seconds for 2023. The further you get from the center line, the more the moon will shift to one side. It'll still be completely in front of the sun, it's just not going to be centered. If you're just outside of the path of annularity, well, the sun will still be up to 89 point something percent obscured, but you'll never get that ring of fire effect. The further away from the path of annularity you go, the less of the sun you'll see obscured, and that's the normal pattern for partial solar eclipses. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna switch maps here so that we can talk a bit more about the path of this particular annular solar eclipse. Although the sun moves from east to west in the sky during the day, that's because of the Earth's rotation spinning on its axis. Eclipses, however, are the result of the moon's revolution, the moon traveling through its orbit. And as a result, eclipses are always going to start in the west and move towards the east through the course of the day. Here you see the entire path of the annular solar eclipse. Basically, the way it works is that the further east you are, the later in the day the eclipse occurs. See this black sun icon right down here in Central America? For everywhere west of that point, you'll see the annular eclipse in the morning. At that spot right there, however, the eclipse takes place exactly at local noon. So the annular phase of the eclipse will be higher in the sky there than anywhere else on the globe. Once you're east of that, the eclipse becomes an afternoon event, and by the time you get out here to eastern Brazil, the eclipse is in the evening. If you park off in the Atlantic Ocean over here, you could see the sun set while it's still eclipsed. The annular solar eclipse on October 14th is somewhat unusual because of how much of the path of annularity 
is on land rather than open ocean. And that's great because it means this will be a more accessible eclipse that's easier to get to than many others. Its path will start off at dawn, off in the northern Pacific Ocean. And then it's going to move ashore. Now the sun is going to be low in the sky when the partial phases start in Oregon. It's only going to be about 5 degrees above the horizon here at the shore. And you see how this path travels southeast through northern Nevada, actually clips a little bit of, of California and a tiny corner of Idaho, but a lot of Nevada, a whole lot of Utah, and then down through New Mexico, and then finally out into Texas and the Gulf of Mexico. The eclipse will touch land again here on the Yucatan Peninsula, and then move through a healthy piece of Central America. Here's that black sun icon that we were talking about before. So Central America gets to see this eclipse around midday. And then the path moves on to the South American continent, passing over Colombia and Brazil before ending out here in the Atlantic Ocean. My next video is going to be about the best places to go and see this solar eclipse. And we're going to go through the map in a lot more detail then, but here's your spoiler. If you consider the entire path of annularity, there are only two major cities in the path. There are a handful of medium-sized towns, and then after that, it's all small towns and remote areas, even in South America. Here in the U.S., the path of angularity is actually going to touch more national parks than it will cities. And there are a bunch of other equally great places to see this eclipse that just have less familiar names. So go ahead and start studying the map and see where it is that you think you'd like to end up. I just got back from nine days on the road scouting out locations for this annular solar eclipse because I wanted to be on the ground on October 14th so I would know exactly what the sun's path was in the sky compared to the landscape around me. I made it to a bunch of different locations and I'll be publishing a completely separate video on where the best locations are for this eclipse. So keep an eye out for that. It's coming soon. A lot of people like to come up with different names for eclipses and stuff. I haven't heard anything talked about for this annular solar eclipse. If it were up to me, at least here in the U.S., we'd be calling this the National Parks Eclipse. But not up to me. Personally, one of my goals is to catch the hat trick of eclipses, or at least that's what I'm calling it. The idea is to see a total lunar eclipse, an annular, annular solar eclipse, and a total solar eclipse, and actually, we have the opportunity to see those in back-to-back -back years. So there's the chance for the hat trick. I might even like, have stickers made up to put on my telescope for every one of them that I get to see. Anyways, keep your eyes open for that scouting video. Okay, we've covered a lot of ground. Thank you for sticking with me through it. I hope this information was helpful and hope to see you again next time here on Totality Town.